In last year, I've gone from a nootropics popping, quantified, techno optimistic transhumanist to whatever it is that I'm doing now. And here was my personal data reflected. For some reason, these empty graphs really didn't do much for my existential crisis. I developed what I call future regret. I wanted to be smarter, happier, better looking, all through low friction tech solutions. But for some reason, every time I ran out of battery or got forbid spent the day reading a book, I wound up feeling really guilty. We are extremely techno-optimistic as a culture. As we can see in this technology and hype cycle, we are at the peak of inflated expectations in Internet of Things, wearable interfaces, and big data. And this continues. What we really want in our connected devices seems to be an AI. But what we actually have right now is Siri, hardly an empathic machine friend. And the projections of when we're going to have this type of technology always seems to be about 20 years away. Kurzweil predicts the singularity through Moore's law, which essentially is saying that once we achieve the processing power, everything else is just going to fall into place. Singular uh, Silicon Valley ideology very much emulates this simplification. Uh, surely the libertarian wet dream is Ayn Rand. Her most famous philosophy, Objectivism, states that moral truths exist independently of human knowledge or the perception of them. So happiness is the end game, and it's logical to pursue it. In the book, To Save Everything, Click Here, the term solutionism is coined, which states that most difficulties are benign in nature with technocratic solutions. It's kind of an applied objectivism. Right now, we are able to communicate many ideas outside of language. Uh, Steve Jobs created the graphical user interface, which surely is the lexicon of the connected world. Isn't it strange that we all just know what this sentence is? So what kind of metrics are we using? We're assuming that these sterile interfaces don't matter. We're using likes, goals, congratulations, and expecting that it doesn't really matter in the direction that we're moving. Uh, Marshall McLuhan said that print has stepped up visual sense at the compromise of other senses. I think that he would agree that there's a great deal of social engineering that can occur just in choosing something like a typography. So what type of senses are we not including? Disgust prevents disease, and it turns out that it varies incredibly from individual to individual. Through disgust, we survive because of feelings of aversion. Consider Paul Rosin's taste test. Uh, we have three glasses in front of us that you can drink from. The first is harmless but extremely bitter. The second is lethal arsenic. And the third is a totally sterile solution, but the glass used to contain dog feces. Now, if we were totally rational beings, everybody would drink the last glass without question. But for some reason, this is not what people do. From this, we can infer that disgust is inherently irrational, and that it exists outside of the fear of things like sickness or of death. Irrational behavior is actually really important to human evolution. Through having strong negative feelings, we're able to create relationships that are based on non-zero-sum games. So could solutionism actually, through this, become an opiate of the masses? We know through the Milgram experiment, as well as the Stanford Prison Experiment, that individuals will adapt to any role that's given to them at the expense of others, however morally or physically object they may feel to what's happening. Historically, this is a pattern. We've had racism, sexism, homophobia, all perfectly socially acceptable at a certain point. So what would happen if our connected devices and our data had a moral objective that we don't yet realize we are making? I think that this, this laissez-faire attitude towards emerging markets in tech can create a future regret on a global scale. We're quantifying like we know exactly where we're going and like we've never made a mistake before. Human beings require mutation, bio and neural diversity to survive. And for some reason, in our digital space, we're taking a very zero-sum approach. I think that solutionism is a sort of zeitgeist epidemic treating every sniff simple with antibiotics. So we kind of need this diversity, and we need to consider what we're doing. Movements like the long now, as well as the slow web, are giving us a way to be mindful inside of our incredible digital gluttony. So I think that we should avoid this concept of perfection, and though I don't really have an answer, pause for a second in the meat space and think about how we feel as 